Hey YouTubers. So I haven't done any anything lately at all. I've just been busy out in the shop and I'm going to give you a, a shot at why I've been out in the shop and not digging and uh, haven't done any video actually of the build I'm doing. I'm kind of under a deadline. I have a vintage motorcycle show I need to make it to and the uh, person I'm hoping to sell this motorcycle to, well I hope he's there at the bike show with another bike. Anyways, uh, let me flip the camera and show you what I got going. Ain't she a beaut? No, that's not the bike I'm building. But uh, that's an example of what I started with. With the exception of, uh, I don't think, yeah, I had a seat on this other bike. So what I started with is this type of machine. It's This one here is an 80, 1980 Honda CX500. It's got the crash bars around the motor, all bone stock. What I end up doing to these is I'll take this ugly seat off, throw that to the side. What I end up doing is taking and cutting out the section frame here, and I'm cutting the frame off right here so this whole loop comes out. I tear off the rear shocks, all the electronics have to be relocated, wiring harness has to be cut drama dra drastically, that word. Um, let's see. And a lot of other stuff. Probably the biggest hurdle is I don't like wiring. So the hurdle is really building the wiring harness. Okay, so I take and move everything I can as far and close up in as here as I can. Uh, the bike I'm building currently, yeah, that's the tires you can see there. It's all mocked up, meaning I got to pull it down and get everything shiny, pretty, repaint it, go through the motor as much as I can, but. It looks like that. Put the Clubman bars on it, relocate everything. I build the brackets all myself for the seat, the mono shock system. Put the exhaust together myself out of different uh, motorcycle headers I have. Um, what I do for this back bracket that holds the seat right here is I made a template some time back. And this is the part where the frame sits. And then I'll take a piece of tubing, well, I don't think you call it tubing, like that, I lay it on there, and I usually get quite a few of them out of there, and I end up with that sort of bracket. Get that welded onto the frame, right where it makes this, well, let's see if we can see that, right where it makes this curve. And that uh, mounts up my shock, mounts up my seat, and then this doesn't hang down like this, this actually bolts up to the bottom of the seat sits in that manner and also gives me a place to mount my tail light. The seat pan or the seat bracket I made up a brat or not a bracket I made up a template almost kind of looks like ET. Anyways made up a template and I had a few of them made at a machine shop or a metal shop I should say that a buddy of mine works at. And then for the rear bottom mount made up another template that helps me position and get everything in the right spot. Well, get the camera over there. And then I take the extra pieces from this metal and put the side pieces on here. Like I say, this is mocked up, so don't critique me on this bolt that doesn't come all the way through. Or this one here that's missing the nut. Those are not the bolts I'm going to use. A couple other things I do is the ignition switch is mounted here. Under here is the fuse. What I do is I take, let me get the tank off this one. I don't have them bolted on there. So there's my wiring harness once I get it all cut down and I don't rewrap it until I take the motor out. I have a few spots taped where I need to make sure things are together. This goes together. I don't wrap this in so this can be replaced if needed later. Various different things like that. But I relocate the fuses underneath the tank yeah, if one goes, it's going to make it a little difficult to go and get after, but they are for only uh, tail light and headlight. I think that's the only two fuses this bike uses. And the blinkers, I use LEDs, so I have to get one that has an adjuster in here so you can change the speed so it doesn't sit there and delay forever. I move the choke from the top of the bars. That's what this here is. 
and move it down to where it sits right where the tank saddles over so you just barely see it I'll give you a picture of that uh, some other things I do is well that great big piece that holds the fuse or covers the fuse that whole piece comes off and I just use some motocross ones to clean that up a little bit take off all the gauges and with the there's a mount under here that normally mounts the horn way down in here uh, I can't really see it on the other bike that well otherwise I'll show you then I take a bracket and weld on to mount the speedometer up top there reroute the brake because everything drops down so far from the old original bars you end up with a lot of cabling a lot of brake hose left over so I reroute the brake hose up and over and down through here there'll be a bracket that connects these up to here cleans them up a little bit and then I'll bring them together up here clean it up a little bit uh, different headlight this headlight utilizes an LED for the blinkers on the sides I still got the plastic cellophane on this one reroute the cables up and high so that they kind of tuck in and tie in a little bit better the exhaust, I go at a 2 to 1. I use the stock exhaust. The stock exhaust looks like this. If you notice, they kind of come out and then tuck back. What I do is I cut them in the middle, extend them, and shoot them almost straight down if I can. I'll kick them in just a little bit. You can see that one's kicked in a little bit. Comes down underneath. Another thing I have to relocate is the battery comes underneath and tees together right in here then up over the brake lever under the frame edge and out the back and then I'll tie in a, a bolt here well not tie it in weld it in after I've capped off well here's one I haven't ground it all down yet normally it's a round hole right there I will uh, weld a cap on that and on this side I weld a bolt in there it gives me a spot to mount my exhaust tip reverse cone tip same type I ran on my bike I built a few years back so the electronics have to be relocated there's the I believe that's the regulator uh, this one nope doesn't have a solenoid on it anymore well that's one of the surprises I get to find when I get these bikes from the bone yard or wherever I find them from towing yards auctions so the battery normally sits in here well now there's a shock in this area all this is gone I use the for an air cleaner I use the little cone pods takes a little bit of revalving or rejetting on the carb to get it to run right because it flows a little better where the H pipe sits that crosses over and connects this header to the other side well you take that out you end up with a nice empty space there makes a great spot to mount a battery see the box I built and I utilize the uh, bolt point for the H pipe up here and back here. You take this bolt out right in here, if I can find it, right here, and this battery swings down. I use the absorbent glass net AGM batteries, which don't have to sit in any particular setup because it's not a liquid flowing through the battery, so they can sit sideways, upside down, diagonal, it doesn't matter. The brake switch, I found a good mounting spot for that. That is what that little piece right there is. Side of the battery box, it's able to tie in to where the spring uh, returns the, can't really get a picture of it. The spring that returns, well, you can barely see it right there. That's the spring that returns the brake lever. Well, the mount for that is right there and you can see that spring going back and forth that is the brake switch spring that turns my brake lights on normally it sits on that section that I cut off that there is a brake switch of course when you cut it off here you have nowhere to mount this thing so you have to relocate those also um, I'm probably missing some stuff but like I say I didn't do any video of any portion of the build because I'm kind of in a hurry to get this thing done. And then I got a gentleman dropping off a 46 Mercury that I got to do a uh, 
cross member on that holds the suspension and the engine because this other one's rotted out going away so now I'm to the point where it's time to tear it down paint everything replace some pieces in the motor that are real common to go out on the old 500s this one I went with a gator skin seat tanks got to be straightened out repainted got a big old dent in the top side big old dent in the front side that's an ugly seat uh, I think the paint scheme on this is going to be black on black, meaning semi-gloss or a flat with a high gloss, probably gloss black on the frame. I just haven't decided. Probably do gloss black on the valve covers, obviously gloss black on the bars. Here's a pile of well, most of the stuff I take off this bike. Got the original bars there. Fender for the front. Oh, that's the back fender. Yeah, back fender because it's got the license plate mount, tail light, all that fun stuff. There's that centerpiece that holds the fuses between the bars. Also clamps down the handlebars and the spot for the ignition right here. Uh, headlight, headlight bucket. Original tachometer. I only run a speedometer. <clears throat> I'm actually thinking about making a mount on this one for like a smartphone. Um, when I'm building these, I try to use as much of the original stuff as possible. So you notice this has been cut off here. This has been cut off here. Um, the right side or the left side, one of the two I used. That's where the tachometer speedometer mount. Um, one of them I used to mount the speedometer. I used that piece of bracket for it. I welded it to uh, another bracket for the horn. The other side is what I welded to the side of the frame for the ignition because it happened to be just the right setup. <clears throat> the rear bar, uh, there's just miscellaneous kind of stuff under there, or in that box. Um, this here is the H pipe. And the uh, headers come back from the engine wrap down into here, and that's where the exhaust comes out. That chrome shiny thing in the middle there. Actually, the other one's in there somewhere, I think. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Rear shocks are in there. Anyways, the H-pipe, the brackets come off of it here and then right here. And I cut those brackets off and actually use those on the battery box I build. And then there's this little section of where the seat mounted. That's that piece that makes that wrap back. Well, actually, this way, no, it goes this way, forward. The seat sits back here, and tail light and the rear fender sit back there. That's most of the stuff I use in the go-kart. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, anyways, that's a lot of the stuff I strip off there. The seat sitting over here. All right, well, there it is. Okay, so here's a shot of the key, or I should say the ignition tucked under the tank, as well as the choke knob kind of hidden underneath there. There is a bolt that I also use this bracket that I weld on to relocate the bolt for the rear portion of the tank with a rubber grommet. One of the other things I noticed um, recently is you can see how far out that ridiculous shift knob or shift lever is out there. That thing is way too far so I'll have to cut that and shorten that. I don't think I've ever noticed that on a bike. I know my 650 wasn't like that, the black one over there. Uh, the other 500 that I did last winter and the other ones, I, I never have seen this. I think this is from a different bike and just switched out for some reason. That'll be an easy fix, though. Um, if you want to see some of the progress of this bike, uh, you might pick it up uh, like 22, 21, 22 videos back. I actually used sections of that tubing that came back here on the build of the crazy cart. So uh, if you watch some of those videos... And you see me doing some work talking about the CX500 components. That tube right there, that tube right there, these tubes on the side, that rounded tube that comes out and into there. That is from that bike build there. So I've been working on it for a little while, but it pretty much took a sideline back in uh, July, May, June. Somewhere in there is when I started the build on the go-kart and kind of did a little bit of work on this. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll put some more videos 
maybe probably won't do a whole lot of videos because it's just take it apart and put it back together after painting and going through the motor a little bit anyways there she is for now